most ancient peoples, the earth was a flat disk floating in the ocean, and the sky was a solid dome enclosing the world. To the Hebrews, this dome, the firmament, created a small bubble between the waters above and the waters below, and if it ever were to crack, these oceans would rush in, drowning the earth. To the Egyptians, this roof was supported by great stone pillars, holding it high above the clouds. For the Sumerians, the sky was made of tin, while the ancient Greeks thought it was a vault of bronze. The Celts believed that the dome of heaven was the father god's skull. When Alexander the Great asked the Celtic leaders what they feared most, they said they were afraid that this ceiling would crack and collapse, crushing the world beneath. The Greek Pythagoras stepped beyond this worldview, proposing that the earth is a sphere, like the sun and moon. The astronomer Eratosthenes of Alexandria measured the size of the earth by comparing the position of the sun in the sky at different latitudes, finding it to be 8,000 miles in diameter. Aristarchus of Samos discovered that the moon is about one-fourth the size of the earth, making it 240,000 miles away, so far away that it takes light more than one second to travel this vast distance. To explain the motion of the sun, moon, and planets, Eudoxus put the earth in the center of 27 crystal spheres, each rotating at a different speed. The outermost sphere carried the stars themselves, tiny points of light painted on a black, impenetrable barrier. 1,500 years later, the Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus put the earth in its proper place as a planet which orbits the sun, meaning that the sun has to be 93 million miles away, so far that light itself takes eight minutes to get here. And other planets are even farther. Saturn is 900 million miles away, 80 light minutes. Other planets were discovered. Uranus, almost 2 billion miles. Neptune, 2.8 billion miles. Pluto, 3.7 billion miles, six light hours away. But there was more. Giordano Bruno argued that there was no crystal sphere enclosing the universe, no limits, no uncrossable border. Instead, he proposed that each star is a whole sun itself, perhaps with its own solar system of planets, moons, comets, and asteroids. And in order to make the stars appear so faint and small, they must be excessively far away. The court of the Inquisition was not amused by his ideas and he was burned at the stake on February 17, 1600. A few years later, Galileo pointed his telescope at the faint, fuzzy band of the Milky Way and discovered not milk, but stars. More stars, so many stars, so far away, that they all run together in a smooth, glowing braid. In 1755, the philosopher Immanuel Kant proposed that these stars orbit around each other in a giant disk, a galaxy, each star held in its orbit by gravity, just as the planets are held in their orbits around the sun. In 1838, the German astronomer Friedrich Bessel accurately measured the distance to the nearby stars, finding that even the closest star, Alpha Centauri, is 25 trillion miles away so far that light takes more than four years to get here, and that's the closest star. The bright star Deneb in the constellation Cygnus the Swan is more than 3,000 light years away. That's 18 quadrillion miles, 18 million billion miles, and the farther we look, the more we found. It was in the 1920s that the astronomer Harlow Shapley showed just how vast our Milky Way galaxy is. Our sun is one star among 100 billion other stars in a spiral disk so large that it takes light 100,000 years to cross it. At the same time, Edwin Hubble proved that ours isn't the only galaxy in the universe. There are lots of them everywhere we look. He measured the distance to the Andromeda galaxy, another spiral of 100 billion stars, finding that it's more than a million light years away from us, with an unimaginable amount of empty space between us, and there are others, even billions of light years away. How many galaxies are there? Just how big is this universe? Why, just 15 years ago, we pointed the Hubble Space Telescope at the darkest, blackest, most empty patch of sky. We pointed it and waited for 10 days while it sat there gathering light. 
looking deeper, bringing in fainter and fainter galaxies. And when we looked at the pictures, we saw a profusion of galaxies of all colors, shapes, and sizes, blue and red, spirals and ellipses, pinwheels and colliding disks of green and yellow, so many galaxies, that when we multiply this tiny patch over the whole sky, we have 100 billion other galaxies in our sky, each one containing 100 billion stars, for a total of 10 hexillion stars in the sky, each one perhaps with worlds, planets, and moons. In this universe, a billion new stars are formed every day while a billion others die. And it's still expanding. The universe is growing in size with more and more space opening up between the galaxies. And that's just what we can see. We can't see any farther than 15 billion light years because that's the age of the universe. And light hasn't had time to get here from any farther. Beyond that, it's probably infinitely large with an infinite number of galaxies, infinite stars, infinite planets, infinite possibilities, constantly growing and expanding into infinite space for all eternity. The moon. Venus. Mars, the Sun, Saturn, Alpha Centauri, the Pleiades, the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy, the Copa Cluster, the Quasar, you are up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are then the traveler in the dark thanks you for your tiny spark he could not see which way to go if you did not twinkle so twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are Then the traveler in the dark thanks you for your tiny spark.